Happy Thursday. It's September 1st, 2022. September is already here. Wake me up when September ends. That's where we're at. And then we're going to have some October rain. And that one is October rain. I don't know. Anyway, we're in that meat part of the year, you know, where they where they pull the rug, the rug pull time of the year, where the powers that be like to make things happen, bring down buildings, collapse markets, shut down financial institutions to cause a ripple effect, to give them an excuse to use the power that they have. And what is the power that they have? Well, they don't have any, actually. Just the power that we give them and allow them to have, again, vampire system, they don't have power unless you give them energy. So these vampires are always looking for your energy. How do they get it? They like fool you into thinking that something's really happening when it isn't happening. They'll artificially create a disaster. And then they'll say, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? It's horrible. And you're gonna be screaming, oh, my power bill is three times what it used to be. Gasoline's up. I can't survive. Food's up, inflation. And you'll be screaming for something to happen because you're so emotional something do something and then they'll do something and it will not be to your benefit it'll be to their benefit it's what they wanted to roll out on all along and they couldn't do it see they would have just implemented it if it was a full-blown dictatorship to where there wasn't going to be any recourse well there's that thing about you know the second amendment that kind of protects or stops them from doing certain things now you can say what you want about it but it's there for a reason it's there to protect you and your rights from government tyranny. It's not about hunting. We don't need this type of weapon for hunting. Yeah, no kidding. It was never about hunting. It was about defense, defending yourself against a tyrannical government. That's why it's in there. So now that we have that clear, they like to rug pull you. They like to do things in September and October. So be very prepared about people in front of you hitting their brake and riding it. Be very prepared. I'm just curious. What, okay, there's the turn. There's the turn signal. I knew it would come. So be prepared in September, October, because um, very possible, especially with the lead up and everything that's going on right now, the energy crisis that we have in Europe and coming to the United States. Um, very possible they're going to rug pull something. You know, they've been tightening making it look like they're really stopping inflation when they'd have to tighten, I don't know, trillions of dollars. I think Zero Hedge had an article that said it would be like 3.9 trillion that they'd have to try and withdraw and tighten out of, whatever, it ain't gonna happen. That's not what they do. The only weapon they have is the ability to create that money and throw it around and create malinvestment and form some other government agency that's gonna usurp your rights and control you, you know, or spend money in countries that are fighting wars and I don't know just a bunch of grifters that's all they are so we'll see what happens uh, coming up but yeah the energy crisis that they're creating you've got uh, you've got um, things you see when you don't have uh, something but um, Europe they're talking about you know all the costs going up in Europe and restaurants not gonna be able to make it because of their power bills. And the same thing here in the United States, you look at some of these power bills and how much they're going up. The business is gonna have to make tough decisions. Can I open the pizza shop and run the ovens all day? You know, am I gonna have enough business? Oh, and all the ingredients that go on the pizza have now doubled or going up 50%, whatever. So I need to raise my prices. Okay, so that, you know, $15 pizza is now $25 pizza. Is someone going to buy that? Or are people gonna make the decision of, uh, you know what, maybe I'll just go get some tortillas and I'll make the pizza at home. And I can make multiples and freeze them and then pull them out later. Decisions will be made. I think that's what's happened though. They've forced us into this situation of artificial scarcity in a lot of ways. But you look at what happened in the pandemic, you look at how they shut down everything, and oh, here's some stimulus money. Here's some money that you, you know, to keep you afloat, which wasn't enough. And so now you've got people who left the workforce or started working at home, and they said, I'm not going back into the labor market. I'm not going back into it. And so you've got a shortage. You know, it, it didn't really occur to me because I always said, where are all the people at? Where are all the workers at? Did they take too many jabs and just keel over? I mean, what happened? They get abducted by spaceships? 
you know, from Pleiades, they came down, or Sirius, or, you know, and they returned, Anunnaki came back, I don't know what happened to us, what happened to all these people in the, in the labor force, because, I mean, everywhere I go, we don't have enough staff, yesterday I went to the vet, and they got a note that says, as of September 1st, we're going to be closed three days a week, and then they tried to extend hours on the other days that they're open, but we, we just can't keep staff and you know people who were in there were new there's one girl that i've been in there for 20 years but the rest of them they're new and i'm just like what the frick i mean they just can't keep people and i said to her i said what do you think's the problem because i've known her for a while what do you think the problem is she said you know people our age you know us you know i'm almost 50 but people our age and she's like 51 or two this might be 51. But anyway, people our age just, you know, they don't want to deal with it. She says, I don't want to train new people. I don't want to deal with this. You know, new new people coming in through the revolving door. She says, you know, I'm not at that point. You know, I know the system. I know how it works. I can do it very efficiently. And I don't want to have to be training new people all the time, you know, so it makes my job harder now. So basically, having worked for a long time, people our age, people ha having worked for a long time, we've got it down to a science. We've got the system in place. We know how things work. We've made it as efficient as we possibly can, and it works. And so now you can't get anybody coming in the door, and if they do, you gotta train them. You don't wanna do that because you know it disrupts the whole order of things. And at some point, you're just like, you know what? And hit from this angle, this angle, that angle. I don't need this BS. And if I can leave the workforce, I'm going to leave the workforce. And that's what she said. I think a lot of people, you know, they just decide they don't want to work anymore around other people, you know, and have to deal with it. I get it. Trust me. I definitely get it. Shut this off. So that may be one factor, you know, you might've decided to take a, an early retirement, so to speak, you know, or, or just move the plans up and, and said, Hey, I was gonna, you know, work until I was, you know, this age, but now, you know what, I'm just going to cut back. I don't need certain things. And I just, I don't, you know, if I don't have an extra car where I got to run around and pay insurance on it and throw gas in it and maintenance, I'm going to get rid of that, save money that way. And I think people are uh, making those decisions to where, you know what, forget it. I just, I'm not going to participate in this anymore. You know, I don't make enough money. I can't make enough money. You know, I, I get taxed and, you know, everything I get taxed, like the income I get taxed on and I go to the store and I get taxed on that for spending it. You know, it's just the government gets it all. So what's the point? And so, I don't know, maybe that's part of the problem. Um, part of the problem is you've got, um, and it's like this in every generation, you know, the people coming in and getting the jobs, they may be 20 years old. Well, there's a different mindset in every generation that comes along. So you're looking at it, you know, from my generation, you know, Generation X, and you look at um, the newer generations coming in, they've got a whole different mindset. And if you're not transitioning, you know, along and you're stuck in kind of a, an older mindset, which works for you, then it's tough to relate to the younger generation. You know, and again, it's like this throughout history. Um, you see it, you know, oh my God, Elvis Presley, he's going to, you know, Satan, you know, and, you know, <laughs> the older people are like, what the heck is this? And then, you know, it comes along and it's like, oh my gosh, Elvis is so cool. Everybody loves Elvis. And it's just a, a generational thing. And I mean, you know, for those of us who didn't grow up on cell phones, I get it. I can see how it would be difficult. The first phone I had was a bag phone in the car, plugs in the cigarette lighter, charges up. I mean, you couldn't carry it with you, had to be plugged in. And I mean, that's what happened. You were just, you know, it was like a home phone, except you got it in your car now. It's like, oh, cool. But you can't go anywhere with it. And then you get a flip phone. It's like, oh my gosh, this is portable. I can go. Then you're listening to other people's conversations, you know, as, as you know, when you're connecting and that's happened many times, but then it got better. And then you had this revolutionary thing called the iPhone that came out. And there's an analogy there that I just thought about with the iPhone and, and Litecoin. But, you know, the iPhone comes along, the next thing you got touch screens and you get all these information, all these apps and all this stuff working on your phone to where people work off their phone now. I mean, it does everything. And so everybody's dependent upon it. And so the younger generation and even, you know, my generation and in between, you know, we're all on our phones. You know, everybody's on their phone and more so the younger generations because they were um, grown up with it. You know, they grew up with it and that's, they've always known that. 
And so some people would look at it and say, it's all you do. You're on your phone. What are you doing? You're not accomplishing anything, which is not true. I mean, yeah, it can be used for entertainment purposes, but I can work from with my phone. I can do everything with my phone. You know, I can put money on my phone. I bank with my phone. You know, I put Litecoin on it and I can spend it. You know, I can be my own bank with a phone. So there's that gap there to where it's that connection. You know, the older generation always looks at the younger generation and says, well, you're just lazy. You know, you don't do anything. Well, I mean, when the technology changes and makes things more efficient, you know, it may not look like you're busting your butt and sweating and, you know, working hard. But the thing is, you might be using your mental muscle and you've got new tools to be able to do that. So I wouldn't necessarily say that, oh, they're lazy. They're not working. Uh, it's a different kind of work now. You know, your gas pumps won't work if we don't have technology. You're not going to be able to swipe your card. You're not going to be able to turn TV on. You're not going to, nothing will work because it's all electronic anymore. It's all chip based. It's all programming. So this digital world is here and it's, you can't think that just because someone's not out hurting their back and busting their knees and, you know, coming home tired and dirty that they're not working. It's just a different kind of work now. And so there's that generational gap there, you know, to where it's like, what'd you do today? Well, I sat on my butt and, um, you know, helped a bunch of people, you know, get their software going so that they could, you know, and it's like, well, you really don't work, do you? You get to work at home, you know? And so it's just that it's a different, it's a different mindset, but work is different now. I mean, we become technological and digital and it requires different types of work. So anyway, I went off on the work tangent, but you know, there's that gap. There's always that gap. You got to try and understand that, okay, if somebody didn't do this, this wouldn't work. I wouldn't be able to have this conversation if we didn't have people who, you know, sit at a desk and code all day. So you know, let's look at it for what it is, but there's still a shortage of workers. Not sure why wages are going up, even though they're saying, you know, I think California is what $15 an hour minimum wage. And they're talking about raising it to $22 an hour. I mean, in around here, I look at jobs and, you know, people are paying easily 15, 20, $25 an hour. And these aren't, I mean, these are jobs where you don't require some special degree. I mean, you just go in there. If you're a decent person and show up, you can go do the job. That's a pretty decent hourly wage. Um, but it's not enough anymore because it keeps going up because we're in rampant inflation and it's just going to get worse. I don't care what they tell you on the news. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They've already built the inflation into it. They've created money. And that's all they do is create more money to fuel that fire. That fire is the inflationary fire. Create more money. You got more money to use in the economy. It's going to go into something that's going to drive the price up. Then you have price inflation as a result of monetary inflation, monetary creation inflation. Creation inflation. What's your, who's your nation? It's the United States. Corporation. Anyway, um, the analogy that I was going to use, and I'll wrap this up, but the analogy I was thinking of using is, look at the technological boom that happened when you, the iPhone came out, the touch screen, the touch phone, when you could have everything on your phone, just download an app, a piece of software that would run, and you're portable then. You can make a video you know, on the road. You can look up your banking information and send funds. You can engage in social media and talk to people, You know, millions of people around the world. So many things that you can do. Uh, you see a you see a mushroom out there, and you go you scan it with an app and say, "Oh, that one's poisonous. Oh, that one's hallucinogenic, uh, and it's hallucinogenic." And so you can you've got this technology at your fingertips. There's no excuse at this point not to educate yourself. If you got the question for anything, the thing I hate is somebody asks me a question and says, "Well, how do you spell this?" It's like you got a freaking library in your palm. Look it up. You know, or, or do you know when this is like, um, pretty for sure. If I don't know, I'm just going to pull up my phone and search and I'll get the answer. Can't you do that? Don't you have a phone? You know, so you've, <laughs> you've got the ability to be completely, you know, self, de you know, dependent on yourself. I mean, you don't have to ask a lot of people questions anymore. You don't have to go to a library and find a book and look up the resource and no, it's all online. You've got just this magical tool of knowledge this Akashic record phone, you know, where you look into anything, you know, but you've got it all. You, you've got it all. You've got this world library in the palm of your hand and, you know, you can choose to use it to educate yourself and, and do anything you want to do, or you can just waste time on it, you know, and just 
kill time, basically, and laugh and be entertained. So it's up to you. It's like any tool. It's like a light coin. It's like any tool, like a light coin. But no, the technology that Apple did, because I remember the time when Apple stock was like five bucks. Everybody's like, oh, it's crap. They're going to go out of business. Microsoft probably just going to buy them. Microsoft's the king. You know, they got Windows on every machine. Windows 95 came out, you know, and then Windows 2000. And then, you know, you've got all these. And it's just like, oh, they're just cleaning Apple's clock. You know, what, what good is Apple at this point? Yeah, it's just some little tiny niche market. And then, boom, the iPhone. Like, holy crap. That's like major innovation. That change, That's a game changer. I mean, and... I, and people didn't realize it at first. And now it's like, holy crap. If we didn't have a phone in our hand with all this information, I, I can't even imagine a world because, you know, my kids growing up with it. They know what it is. You know, since they can remember, they've, you know, worked off the phones, worked off tablets. They don't know a world without it. Um, but people didn't realize at first that, holy cow, this is revolutionary. I mean, all this information in the palm of your hand, very easy to use. You just pick it up and boom, boom, boom. Babies pick it up and like, eh, they know how to work it. Very intuitive. Litecoin's the same way. People don't understand how sound money that, how sound that money is, digital money. They don't understand what privacy means and why it's necessary. Not yet. I have no idea. The fact that it's already existing on this huge liquid coin called Litecoin that has a finite supply, that has a network that's never stopped running, the fact that you have privacy on it, pretty big deal. You got the Fed now coming out to where at the, this month they're going to start testing it. They want it rolled out by July of next year to where instant transactions. Oh, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be seamless. Once that's in place, hey, we can just give you your CBDC now. Here's your money. Everybody gets a CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Take it all digital. Not going to have cash anymore. Going to be able to control everything. Lock you down. Oh, boy. So then, how important is privacy in your money at that point? Pretty darn important. You got to be able to see what's coming. And when you realize all the things that are coming down the line, all the shenanigans that they're going to pull on you, just leads to the ability to enslave you to digitally enslave you. That's all they want to do. So don't let them do that. Realize that, hey, I might need money that's private, especially digital money. Yeah, I got cash, I can get some gold, I can get some silver, but I might need something to where if I gotta leave the country or even the state, it might get locked down to that level. If I need to go somewhere, I need to be able to take that with me. And nobody needs to know I have it. And when I pay somebody, nobody needs to know that it came from me. It just showed up. It's like cash in an envelope that just happened to show up. Well, that's pretty important. If you don't realize it now, you will soon. Litecoin already has that privacy built in. Bitcoin does not. It doesn't. It can't do that. You can't send a private transaction with Bitcoin. And it's $20,000 for one Bitcoin. It's under $60 for one Litecoin. Hmm. And it's a four to one ratio, so let's be fair. So you need four Litecoin equal one Bitcoin as far as sheer numbers because there's 21 million Bitcoin that can exist and there's 84 million Litecoin that can exist. So if you want to get one Bitcoin, you get four Litecoin. Oh, and guess what? It's only going to cost you under 250 bucks for the Litecoin. It's going to cost you $20,000 for the Bitcoin. The utilitarian value, not saying store of value, the utilitarian value is not built into Bitcoin. It is built into Litecoin You've got all the fundamentals of sound money now in Litecoin. You have sound money for the digital age in Litecoin. It is what it is. You're going to wake up one day and say, wow, that was like the iPhone. It changed everything. Privacy and money. Hmm. I hope every other coin adopts it. I really do. We should have privacy in all of our cryptocurrencies. But community is going to have to decide. Developers are going to have to decide. We are going to have to decide. Right now, it's already been decided. Litecoin is already there. It's ahead of the game. It is the technology. It is the sound money. All right. Love y'all. Have a wonderful Thursday and um, tomorrow's happy hour. We'll be talking about a little bit of Litecoin. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about a lot of things. 4 p.m. Central Time on Litecoin Lisa's channel. Go search that on YouTube, Litecoin Lisa, and we'll have our happy hour and I'll have a few drinks and have a good time. Hope to see you there. In this turmoil... You have got to trust yourselves. You have got to listen to what's inside of you. 
Don't be listening to these talking heads in this land of confusion. Turn the idiot box off. Listen to yourself. Do your own research. You've got the tool in the palm of your hand to do all the research you need to do. But trust yourself. Okay? Believe in yourself. You know all the answers. All right. Love you all. Have a wonderful day.